I welcome all the learners to KK Hendrick State Open University. Today we will discuss about nature and purpose of business. This is the first unit of BCOM first semester and the name of the course is Business Organization and Business Ethics. So learners, let's start with business. What is business? Let us take the examples of a shop a hotel, a restaurant. A shop may it sell grocery, furniture, computer. A hotel provides accommodation and food and a restaurant provides tea, coffee, snacks. All these are related to business. So you can take some other examples also like a computer shop selling computer, a furniture house selling furniture etc etc all these we term as business houses and business so these are all business and generally we see that selling activities are involved means we purchase and our salesmen sell that product which we need so a business may be defined as an activity which is related to sales purchase production distribution and services so if these activities are undertaken then we can turn a particular organization as a business organization or it is a business so sales means you have to uh, sell something for that we have to purchase something this is sale and purchase we have to produce something for purchasing for selling you have to distribute all these goods or services among the consumers and you have to provide uh, services for example the hotel provides services in the form of providing accommodation in the form of providing food etc so where all these activities are involved we can term it as a business and the important aspect is that in all these activities the main aim is to earn profit so a business it involves or it connected with sales purchase production distribution and services and these are aimed at or these are undertaken with the motive of earning profit so uh, in a word it can be termed as an economic activity so business is an economic activity related to all these aspects that we have discussed so what is economic activity economic activity that is related to production distribution consumption etc so the goods produced these are consumed and these are distributed so all these are termed as economic activities the goods produced are directed towards the end consumers where consumption takes place for that you have to distribute the goods so economic activity related to production distribution and consumption directed to the final consumers and in this process the businessman or any person involved in these activities earn an income in the form of profit in the form of interest etc so this is termed as economic activity so anybody involving in these activities like distribution for example a wholesaler or the producer the manufacturer these activities are undertaken to sell the goods and services and these are directed to the final consumers and in this process they earn some profit and these are termed as economic activity on that basis we can define business as an economic activity related to production distribution sales etc and these are undertaken with the motive of earning profit so let's turn to our discussion to another topic that is features of business so by understanding these features we can identify what is business or what is not business first of all business is an entrepreneurial activity so who is an entrepreneur entrepreneur is a person who foresee a business opportunity we have to forecast whether there is any opportunity to start a business means for business we have to earn profit whether there is any opportunity to start a business venture 
then the entrepreneur takes the responsibilities of the business he have to start the business he have to earn profit and he have to sell the goods to the consumer so all this involves certain responsibilities and those responsibilities are undertaken by the businessman so he is an entrepreneur the entrepreneur have an arc for innovation he have to always find something new something new have to be offered to the consumers in the face of competition and another aspect is that the entrepreneur combines the factors of production factors of production are land labor capital and management all these factors are combined by the entrepreneur he takes the responsibility for the business on the basis of the opportunities identified so entrepreneur is the person who undertakes business activities so he can be termed as businessman but he have to be an entrepreneur means he have to look for something new always the next feature of business is profit earning so if there is no element of profit earning there is no business so if we are undertaking a business venture our aim is to earn profit this is one of the features so a social function a social activity a religious activity is not business because there is no element of profit earning so to be business there must be element of profit earning the next is risk and uncertainty so a businessman have to face various risks and uncertainty we have already stated that the aim of business activity is to earn profit but in the process of earning profit we cannot say that there will be no loss definitely there may be a loss so these are the risks and the businessman have to undertake have to perform all these activities in the face of uncertainty so there may be loss but the entrepreneur but the businessman have to undertake these risks and uncertainty so business involves risks and uncertainty as there is certain prediction have to be done some business activities have to be undertaken the entrepreneur asks for innovation new things so there may be loss but there is an element of risk and uncertainty always in the business the next feature of business is continuity of transactions let us take an example suppose we have a bicycle and have to sell it for an amount of rupees 30000 so i sold the bicycle and i got the amount so the transaction is over the next day i have nothing to sell because i have only one bicycle i have not purchased it i have just sell it and the transaction is over this kind of transaction is not business to be a business transaction there must be continuity so if a shop selling bicycle always sell bicycle for that it purchase bicycle and the sale function continues means the transactions going on going on going on so this term of transaction can be termed as business transaction a single transaction of sale though it may be for a profit cannot be termed as business because there is no continuity one transaction earn profit and over this is not business to be business the transaction must continue regularly and in the process you may earn profit or sometimes you may face loss so let's go to the next feature that is creation of utility utility means usefulness for example this is the pen this has some utility for me i can write with this pen suppose somebody offers you food when you are hungry so you have utility for that food then suppose you are not hungry then somebody offers food then there is no utility for you for food so this is utility the usefulness of a particular product or particular service so business creates different types of utility like form utility form utility means converting the raw materials to finished products so in this process the business change the form and give another form to a particular product 
This is form utility where raw material changes form and become a finished product which can be consumed by the final consumer. Next is place utility. Place utility is created by transportation. So from the place of production, where production takes place, we can send the goods to the place of consumption where consumers are there. So by transportation, the business creates place utility by transferring the goods and the third one is time utility time utility means when goods are not required in the market these are stored in warehouses and when these are needed these are offered these are sold in the market and in this way the time utility is created by storing the goods in warehouse and business creates all these three forms of utility let us discuss the next feature of business that is consumer satisfaction. Consumer satisfaction means a consumer to whom you have sold goods must be satisfied with the product or the service that you have offered. Without consumer there is no business who will purchase your product. So the business must satisfy all its consumers to continue its business activities in the market. Then the next one is serving social needs. The business is a part of the society. Therefore, it have to serve certain social needs. It have to deliver its social responsibilities. So this is also a feature of a business that business being a part of the society must discharge its social responsibilities. We will discuss this social responsibility in the last part of this session. Let us discuss the objectives of business. The objectives of business can be classified as economic objectives, human objectives and social objectives. Let us first discuss the economic objectives. Economic objectives, the first point that we are going to discuss is profit earning. We have already discussed uh, profit earning is the primary motive of every business. So this is the economic objective. If there is no profit, there is no business. Because without profit, a business cannot run. How the businessman will meet his expenses without profit? So the primary objective primary economic objective of business is to earn profit. The next objective of business is production of goods. So for a business to earn profit there must be some exchange, exchange of goods and services. For this exchange of goods and services there must be production. Goods must be produced in the factory which can be exchanged to the consumers and in the process of buying and selling means in the process of exchanging the business earns profit and the final consumer gets the product then the third one is technological improvements we have already discussed that a businessman is an entrepreneur he have an art for innovation so business always tries to find out something new the new product the new machinery where cost of production is lower. So this kind of innovation, this kind of technological advancement have to be brought into the business to uh, face the competition in the market. So technological improvements, innovations, these are the objectives of the business. Then we can discuss the human objectives of business. Human objectives relate to welfare of employees. Employees are part and parcel of the business. So if a business earns profit, it is because of the employees that are working in that particular organization. In this process, the business is also required to satisfy its employees. How a business can satisfy its employees? Besides salary or the wages, the business can offer bonus, some other allowances, a share in the profit provision of education for the children of the employees etc etc there are different schemes through which employees can be satisfied 
so that employee can feel that the business is doing something for us and will also work for the business and in this process the business earn its profit next is satisfaction of consumers so business without satisfied consumers cannot run in the market it cannot sell any product without consumers so consumers have to be satisfied with quality goods and reasonable price then the next one is satisfaction of shareholders shareholders are the owners of the business these persons have invested money in the business and it is the responsibility of the business to give a fair return in the form of dividend to the shareholders so business must give fair return to the shareholders and this is one of the objective of business then we can discuss here the social objectives of business number 1 supply quality goods a business have to supply have to produce standard quality goods a business have to produce the quality goods which will satisfy the need of the consumers without good quality products the business cannot run in the long term at the same time it have to charge reasonable price from the consumers the economic aim of the business is to earn profit but earning profit is not permitted by charging exorbitant prices for the products so the pricing strategy must be reasonable so that business can earn profit but at the same time it can serve the social objectives by keeping the price at a reasonable level then cooperation with the government like paying taxes then meeting all the obligations required by the regulatory authorities etc so these are the different objectives that we have discussed and these objectives have to be attained by a business organization to be successful in the competitive market so let us turn to another aspect of business that is the factors that we need to consider before starting a business suppose you are going to start a business in that case you have to consider certain factors that need due consideration otherwise the business may suffer loss or business have to close down in the future but we have discussed already in the features that continuity of transaction is very much important to term it as a business and profit earning is the main motive so let's start a discussion on the factors that we need to consider before starting a business number 1 availability of raw materials so if you can locate your factory your manufacturing unit in a place nearby to raw materials that will be beneficial for you for example limestone is available in meghalaya in a very large quantity and if you have noticed most of the cement factories are located in meghalaya because of the availability of raw materials therefore the cost for raw materials is minimum where your factory is located nearby places of where raw materials are available then transportation facility whether all modes of transportation is available or not it may be road it may be water air etc if these facilities are available then you can locate you can start a particular business in that particular place so that you can avail the transportation facilities at minimum cost communication facilities these facilities must also be available because you have to communicate at a very high speed nowadays internet services mobile services must be there in that particular place where you want to start a business then financing facilities finance is the life blood of business without finance you cannot run your business so you must see whether financing facilities like banking and other institutions which provide long term finance as well as short term finance are available or not insurance facilities is another important aspect that you have to consider before starting a business we have already discussed that business always faces certain risks and uncertainties to cover those risks 
we have to insure our business, its machines, its production, etc., etc. So, insurance facilities must be available there. Then, warehousing facilities. Warehouse or go down is required to store the goods. It may be raw materials, it may be finished products you have to store because at a particular point of time there may not be demand in the market. So, in that period of time you have to store the goods in your go down and when there is demand in the market you have to sell it. That is why warehouse plays an important role. Next is marketing facilities. Marketing all relates to selling, as advertising, etc. The goods you have produced must be sold in the market. So you must tie up with the dealers, with the wholesalers, with the retailers, etc. So that you can sell to the final consumers. So the channel of distribution involving wholesalers, retailers, etc. You have to find it out. You have to make certain strategies how to sell the goods to the wholesalers etc etc all these factors have to be considered before you start your venture now we are towards the end of this discussion session and here we will discuss the social responsibilities of business we have already discussed that business is a part of society and therefore it have to discuss certain social responsibilities when we have discussed these social objectives of business Social objectives of business is also known as Corporate Social Responsibility CSR. CSR or Corporate Social Responsibility is beyond the objective of earning profit. So it's beyond the economic objectives of business. Here the business have to serve the society as a part of the society. So the different activities may be undertaken to serve the social need or to discharge the corporate social responsibility. It may relate to environment protection, it may relate to health care of the community, it may relate to education and skill development, it may relate to, uh, not to produce goods which are harmful to the society, not to pollute the environment, etc. etc. In this respect, we would like to share some additional information regarding CSR. The Companies Act 2013 have laid down certain provisions for CSR. According to these provisions, every private limited company or public limited company either with a net worth of rupees 500 crore or a turnover of rupees 1000 crore or net profit of rupees 5 crore need to spend at least 2% of its average net profit for the immediately preceding 3 financial years on CSR. So this may relate to eradicating hunger, poverty, malnutrition, promoting preventive health care, promoting education, gender equality, setting up of homes for women, senior citizens then environmental sustainability, ecological balance, animal welfare, etc. So this have been prescribed by the Companies Act 2013. Then this act also specified the process for CSR. According to the provisions of Companies Act 2013, then the board of directors of the company need to constitute a CSR committee to formulate the CSR policy of the company and according to that policy the CSR activities will be undertaken. The CSR company must have at least three directors including an independent director. However, unlisted public companies and private companies that are not required to appoint an independent director from having an independent director as a part of their CSR committee. So these companies are which are not listed are not required to appoint independent director in the CSR committee. And the companies are also stipulates that the committee for a private company and a foreign company need to have a minimum of only two members. So these are all about the social responsibilities of business and that we have discussed here 
the uh, first unit nature and purpose of business where we have discussed the features of business the objectives of business that we have classified in the three forms economic objectives then social objectives and human objectives then we have discussed a very important aspect that is the factors that we have to consider before starting a business and lastly we have discussed the CSR corporate social responsibility of the business and certain provisions of the Companies Act 2013 in this regard. So thank you very much. We will meet again soon. Thank you.